Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an interesting infinite sum. We have 2 squared plus 3 squared divided by 2 factorial plus 4 squared divided by 3 factorial and so on and so forth. And we can actually express it in a general form so that the general term is more clear. But basically the idea is you take 2 squared divided by 1 factorial, which I didn't write, which is 1. And then you take the next number, 3, square it, and then divide it by the factorial. But the difference between the number being squared and the number being factorial is 1. The numerator always has a bigger base or argument or whatever you want to call that number. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and express this in the sigma form because that is how we're going to solve it. We're going to break it down and break it down and break it down and then put it together. Okay, ready? There's going to be a lot of disassembly and assembly, so bear with me and try to keep track, take notes, because we're going to put these pieces together at the very end. Okay, so how do we express this expression or sum using sigma? First of all, I want my first index to be 1, so I want to start with n equals 1, and that goes to infinity. And the general term, if you think about it, starts with 2 squared divided by 1 factorial. So the numerator is going to be 1 more than n, because our smallest index is 1, so it's going to be n plus 1 squared, and that is divided by 1 factorial, which is n factorial. So when you replace n with 0, I mean n with 1, n with 2, n with 3, you're going to be getting the successive terms. Make sense? Okay, hopefully it does, because this is basically the essence of the solution. Great, let's go ahead and find out what this sum equals. First of all, let me tell you, even though I'm not going to get into the proof, this sum actually, well, we will kind of will if you just use the idea which we're going to talk about. Uh, but uh, if you enter this in Wolfram Alpha, do you get a result? And how do you enter it? We'll talk about that too, okay? Stay tuned. So stay tuned. Okay, first step is breaking down the numerator, or in other words, factoring. That's going to give us n squared plus 2n plus 1 divided by n factorial. And of course, that's always n equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to kind of ignore the indices, indices for now because we're going to be writing it over and over. So why don't we just stick to sigma? But when we need to change, are we going to change it? At some point, yes. Some of the indices, and then we can start writing it, okay? So we're not going to write the indices, but it's meant. So now how do you break this down? Easy. With the sigma, it's going to look like this. You're going to have n equals 1 to infinity. And I said I wasn't going to write it, but I forgot about it. So let me not write it. So we're going to have n squared over n factorial and then plus. So I'm kind of breaking it down like this and then like this, you know, like that and so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? Hopefully. And then the next one is just going to be like that. So we're going to write n squared over n factorial and then 2n over n factorial. And finally, it's going to be 1 over n factorial. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to find each sum and add them up. That's the idea. So I'm going to focus on each sum first. Let me tell you something. Uh, the last one is actually fairly easy, which we can talk about at the end, uh, because we're going to have to do these anyways, right? So let me start with the second one then or what about the first one why don't we do the first one first right let's do this one first okay so how do you do n squared over n factorial here at this point I do need to change the index because I need to kind of step backwards a little bit but if I stick to n equals 1 and when I write something like n minus 2 it's not going to be meaningful because we don't want anything to be like negative 1 factorial it's not even defined right like Gamma function tells us that, nope, there is no value. So, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to start with n equals 1 to infinity. And now what I want to do is I want to expand this expression a little bit. So, maybe I can do this. I can just go ahead and expand it a little bit. Like, uh, replace n with 1, you're going to get 1. And then if n is equal to 2, I think we're going to be okay with 2. So why don't we just do this? Change it to 2. And then you can just continue. OK. 
Okay, makes sense? It's the same thing, right? I mean, I just changed the index and wrote the first term. Good. I mean, I, I didn't change this because I did not change the index uh, per se. Okay. Now, what do you do with this? We're going to go ahead and break it down. First of all, you can go ahead and if I were to isolate this, let me just go ahead and maybe take a look at it separately and then add one at the end. So how do you handle this, right? n squared over n factorial. So I'm going to go ahead and write the n squared as n times n and the n factorial is n times n minus 1. Great. Now this is n equals 2, 3, infinity. The n's cancel out and we end up with something like this. And then I can kind of break it down n minus 1, n plus 1 and then n minus 1 factorial with the sigma n equals 2 to infinity. Maybe I should move this a little bit to the left, to the right. Oops, that didn't work well. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. Start from scratch. Okay. So now this is going to equal n. I'm making the same mistake over and over. Let me write the sigma first. Okay. n equals 2 to infinity. Now this is going to be n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. And now we're going to go ahead and split it up. n equals, don't forget, we have to add 1 at the end. So n equals 2 to infinity, uh, I'm going to separate it into n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial plus n equal 2 to infinity, 1 over n minus 1 factorial. By the way, uh, this is why the n minus 2 comes in because we have to break it down one more time. And then this is going to be n minus 1 over n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. Aha, this is where the changing the index is helpful. And then plus this one, I'm still writing it down, and don't worry, I'm going to simplify this in a little bit. Now, what is this equal to, right? n minus 1 cancels out. If you think about the first expression, you start with n equals 2, so you get 1 over 0 factorial, plus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial. Did you recognize this? Sometimes it's written as 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial. You can also write it as n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial. But guess what? This is equal to e. Make sense? Yes. That's Euler's number. Thanks to Euler, we have a finite value for the sum. And this one, if you start at n equals 2, you're gonna first term is going to be 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial. So you're going to be missing the very first term here. So it's just going to be e minus 1. Make sense? Cool. So what we need to do is we kind of need to put these two things together. But how do you put it? Well, we have the 1 from here, and we have this sum, which is the sum of two sums, <laughs> like this one and this one, like this one and this one. So we're going to have the following, 1, the, which we had initially, and then e, and then e minus 1. Interesting, right? This is the first piece. Be careful about that. The 1s cancel out, and we end up with 2e. So that's the first term, which is 2e. And then we're going to have another term. So in other words, n equals 1 to infinity, n squared over n factorial is equal to 2e. And where does the additional 1 come from? We change the index, so we expanded the first term. Okay? Great. Let's go ahead and do this next. How do you handle this was the first one? The second one is n equals 1 to infinity of 2n over n factorial. So we can kind of take the 2 out, right? And then write it as n over n factorial. And the n over n factorial with the 2 outside can be written as n over n times n minus 1 factorial. n's cancel out, leaving us with 1 over n factorial. So we get 2 times n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Now remember, this starts with 1 over 0 factorial, so it's the whole thing e, which gives us 2e again. We got 2e and another 2e. 2e or not 2e. Okay, so let's box these terms because at the end we're going to go ahead and copy them. What was the last one? The last term was this and I told you this is fairly simple because I already told you. This starts with 1 over 1 factorial by the way. So it's basically missing 1 over 0 factorial which is 1. So this is going to be e minus 1. Get it? We're missing 1 so if you add 1 to both sides you're going to get e. So, what do we have? Let's go ahead and summarize. First, we had this, n equals, okay, notability after a while, or the pen, I don't know, is just kind of going crazy, writing all over the place. Okay, great. So now, 
here's what we have n equals 1 to infinity of n squared over in n factor by the way if my writing is sloppy i apologize because i need to hurry so that it doesn't go crazy n equals 1 to infinity this is 2n over n factor that was the second term and that is also 2e remember that and the last term was the easiest because that will just give you e minus 1 remember the first term is missing so the next thing we need to do is add these things up 2e plus 2e is 4e plus e is 5e so then our sum is just going to be 5e minus 1 what was our sum? Let's rewrite it. n equals 1 to infinity of n plus 1 factorial. I mean n plus 1 squared over n factorial. And that's just equal to 5e minus 1. In other words, I know this was a long video, but I hope you will bear with me. Be patient towards the end because I need to. I don't want to rush, by the way. Anyways, so this sum that we were being asked is 5e minus 1. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.